In this video, we're going to talk about shrinking and stretching of parent functions and their graphs, even and odd functions, and domain and range of functions. So as far as shrinking and stretching, the shrinking or stretching of a function will be evidenced by a constant value either in front of the entire original function or inside the function operation, c times x, where it will be attached directly to, multiplied by, your independent variable. So if the function's y value is multiplied by a number other than 1 or 0, the graph will either shrink, compress, or stretch vertically. So if we are involving the entire function, if we have a constant out front of our entire function, that will affect the resultant y value that comes out of that function operation. And it will either vertically stretch or compress the graph of that function. If that constant value c is inside of the function operation, if the x value is multiplied by the constant value c other than a value of 1 or 0, the graph will either shrink or stretch horizontally. The rules are, if that constant value c is a fraction, notice all values between 0 and 1 on the real number line are fractional values. If that's the case, we are definitely going to shrink the output of that original function. Here, we're going to get one-third the y values from our parent function y equals x squared that we normally would get. If that value is greater than 1, we are going to get a stretching of our graph. Here, the output values are three times what they would be on the parent function, y equals x squared. Inside, horizontally, for a fractional value, if we have y equals one-third of the x value we started with for the parent cubic function, that is going to be evidenced by a horizontal stretch. It's going to be a much wider function. If that constant value is greater than 1, that is going to give us a horizontal shrink. So there is shrinking and stretching, and it's just a constant value either in front of the entire function or inside the function operation. Let's take this parent function. Here is a root function. We are going to vertically stretch that parent function a value, a constant value of 2. That is a stretch because c is greater than 1 in that example. So you can see that what would normally be done at 2 is now done at 4 in that example. For a c value between 0 and 1, which is this example, we are going to get a horizontal stretch. It's inside next to the independent variable, and that gives us a horizontal stretch. Here is a horizontal shrink. c is greater than 1. Here is a vertical shrink. c lies between 0 and 1, some fractional value. So there are the examples of what vertical and horizontal stretching or shrinking, we generally call a shrink, is also called a compress or a compression. So shrinking, compressing, so horizontal or vertical stretching or compressing is evidenced on our function rule by a constant value of c, and it affects the graph by either shrinking the graph, uh, compressing the graph, or stretching the graph. We've talked quite a bit about the graphs of even and odd functions. I want to take just a moment to highlight that you can determine whether you have an even or an odd function analytically. 
We know graphically we have an even function if it's symmetric about the y-axis. We know graphically we have an odd function if it's symmetric about the point of origin. Analytically, we can determine without even looking at the graph that we have an even function if we feed that even function a negative value, do our function operation, whatever that might be, and the result is the original function we started with before we fed it the negative value. In that case, analytically, every single time, if that's the case for you, you're dealing with an even function. For odd functions, if we take our original function and we put a negative inside, just as we did here, we feed that original function a negative, and then we algebraically or trigonometrically or however clean it up and that negative pops out front or we get the opposite of the original function that we started with then analytically we have proven that we have an odd function additionally if you have a power function that is made up of nothing but powers that are even, then you're guaranteed that is an even function. We'll talk more about that later as we learn more calculus. If you have a power function that is made up of nothing but odd powers, then you are dealing with an odd function. Again, that is something we will revisit later when we learn some more calculus, but right now you can use that. If you're given the function y equals negative x squared plus x to the fourth, and you're asked if the graph is symmetric about the y-axis, the answer is yes. Why? Because it's a power function with nothing but even powers, and therefore it's going to be an even function, and all even functions are symmetric about the y-axis. So you can make those types of connections. Let's talk about domain and range and the acceptable notation that I'm going to be after for this school year. The domain of a function are all input values. For us, we're going to, for now, say x values, but we can use any variable. All x values that result in a well-defined output. If I put an input value, an independent variable value for us, an x value, into a function rule and I get a well-defined output, then that x value is in the domain of this function. If I don't get a well-defined output, that domain value is not there. That x value is not part of the domain of the function. Let's look at this example. We've been taught in all of our years of algebra that we cannot divide by zero. So we find domain values, the very best technique for finding any domain value, is to look for where we might have math problems. We have math problems when we divide by zero. We have math problems when we have negative under a root sign. We have real number math problems there. So the first thing that we could do with this rational function is we know that the value of x equal negative 1 and the value of x equal 2 are not in the domain. And we know that because that's going to give us division by 0. So we need to throw those values out. Here is the acceptable notation for throwing those values out of your domain. You will most often see set notation in this class because that's most often what you're going to see on the AP test. So here's how we throw it out. This says the domain contains all x values from negative infinity up to but not including negative 1. The parentheses means not included. Remember we can never include uh, negative or positive infinity. This is a union sign. This says in addition there's another set of values x values in the domain of this function, starting at negative 1, but not including it, all the way up to positive 2, but not including positive 2. So we have, in effect, thrown out 
negative 1. We have said x cannot equal negative 1. And we've done the same thing here. There is another set of values that are included in that domain. There's another union sign. Starting at x equal 2, but not including it, all the way up to positive infinity, but of course not including positive infinity. So we've said not only can x not equal negative 1, it cannot equal 2. So there's division by 0. Here is 0 over 0. That is not even dividing by 0. That's trying to divide 0 by 0. That's not undefined. That's indeterminate. And we will work with indeterminate forms of rational functions a lot. So you will see that again. Domain and range. Here's the range. We will find the range of a function much, much easier using calculus. Up to this point, if you had a function like this, finding the range of this function would be pretty tricky. It's not as straightforward as finding the domain. Knowing that you're not going to have out output values where x equals negative 1 and not have output values where x equals 2 does not translate directly into what the actual range of a function is. So what we're going to say now is, if you need to use your calculator to find a tricky range of a function, then you'll be allowed to use your calculator. If it's a range that you ought to know, basically of a parent function, then I expect you to know it. That includes trig functions. You are expected to know the range of the parent sine function, the range of the parent cosine function, the range of the parent tangent function. Parent function, domains, and ranges, I expect you to know. But if we have tricky ranges, then you will be given a calculator where you can determine what that range value is. Domain, fairly straightforward to find. Range, much easier to find once we learn calculus. So there's the end of this video. Come to class next time, and we'll work homework problems on stretching, compressing, even and odd, and domain and range.